Welcome to another edition of Variant Reviews, and on this episode, we take a look at Toy Biz's Dr. Octopus. Now, right off the bat, I gotta say, this episode is brought to you by Ray Basilio. If it wasn't for him, this episode really wouldn't have happened. Um, he's the guy, he was my connect in getting this figure. And if you're ever looking for a figure in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, get in contact with this guy. His information is in the description below. Also, he has a group on Facebook, and there's a bunch of guys looking for, you know, buying, trading, etc., etc., and check that out as well. So looking at the front of the box here, you see it's super poseable, has 61 points of articulation, comes with a 32-page comic book, and it has some kind of trading card game where it's Marvel, Marvel versus System. I don't know. I don't know. We'll get to that later. Now, taking a look at the side of the box, you see Doc Ock there just chilling. Check that out. Now, on the back of the box, you see a description, and you also see a lot of the uh, figures that comes in this wave. You have Storm, Man-Thing, Captain America, Black Widow, Iceman, Iron Man, and Doc Ock. It has this power grid on the back where it actually tells you your, their intelligence, the strength, speed, durability, energy projection, and fighting skills. And I guess it's really just to kind of give you an idea of what the character is or his power and his abilities. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and look at the base. Now, it's a really nice base. It's very detailed, especially for an older figure. If you look at it, it, it looks like uh, like kind of like a spider web. You can kind of see a lot of this uh, dry brushing, a little bit of the dark paint. Uh, this metallic paint, and uh, you look inside, there's these green pegs. That looks kind of cool in a way, but uh, on the side, it has this little canister with these nuclear kind of symbols, and the scratch kind of looks like Wolverine scratched it or something. Highly unlikely. And on the back, there's these little peg holes for if you want to put it on the side of the wall or something like that. Now, that's pretty much the base. A quick bio on Doc Ock. Uh, he, he was first featured... In the 1963 The Amazing Spider-Man, uh, the number three issue, that's when he was first featured. And basically, the, one of the things that really stand out about this character is his uh, tentacles. Those, uh, those Obviously, that's why he has a name, Dr. Octopus. So, anyway, there's been a lot of variations of, the, of this character over the years, which has been kind of cool. And uh, one of my favorite ones would probably be from the 90s Amazing Spider-Man cartoon... And then, uh, I guess, the from the representation uh, Alfred Molina did in the uh, Spider-Man movie. Uh, I believe that was part two. At a closer look, Dr. Octopus is made by Toy Biz, has 61 points of articulation, stands a little bit under 6 inches, about 5.5, comes with a base, a comic book, and a trading card. So as soon as I get this guy out of the box, I'm looking at him, I'm checking out his detail, he looks great, especially for an older figure. This is like the second time I say that. Man, I, I like the, the little paint detail. There's like paint differentiation. from. There's different kinds of greens on him, um, especially like on his stomach and right there in the crotch area, whatever, on his chest. This Dr. Octopus is obviously kind of going off of a little bit more pudgier, stout Dr. Octopus. Not quite fat, but I don't know. You kind of see a little bit of abs and he has some pectorals there. And uh, a quick look at the back, you can kind of see where those tentacles go. It's actually quite easy to put the tentacles on him. All you got to do is grab it and put it in the hole. And you really don't need to uh, lock it in or move it around or anything like that. Other than that, once they're in, you're pretty much good to go. At a closer look, the tentacles look pretty awesome, man. It has a lot of detail. Pretty much when you go up through the entire... Uh, tentacle itself is just pretty much the same thing all the way up it does have one point of articulation in the tentacle when you look at it because it has this wire inside of it that you can pretty much kind of bend it in any shape you want to all the other points of articulation pretty much come from the head of that tentacle the little grabby handy thingy a lot of points of articulation at the head there's a uh, every little point that uh, basically kind of has like a bend to it is a point of articulation. So you have you have one at the very tip, and then you have one uh, right under that, and then each one of the branches, I guess you would want to call them. I don't know what you want to call them. I'm I'm not a technical guy, but uh, they're they're pretty much the same. And you could also turn the head as well. Now looking at Doctor Octopus, you can turn his head all the way around 360 degrees. When you turn it on the side, you kind of see how his head goes all the way down pretty good. But when you try to pull it up, it kind of just stops and it looks normal. And that's as far up as it goes. 
Now, when you move his arm around, you have full rotation of his arm. Pretty good. Can't complain there. He has this bicep swivel. And he has double-jointed elbows, which is good. I love it when figures have double-jointed elbows. Now, when you take a closer look at his wrist here, it turns all the way around, which is awesome. Also, you can move his hand, which is pretty cool. He has thumb articulation, and he has finger articulation. He doesn't have individual finger articulation, but uh, you can move his fingers all together at the same time, which is pretty cool. So if you want to have him do like a closed fist type of pose or something like that, take a good look at him. Man, he looks great, man. Love him. Now, he does have this waist swivel. Look at that. Look, eh. When you get into the legs over here, you can lift them up pretty high, so it looks like he's kicking pretty high, which is pretty cool. And you can push him all the way back. That's that's pretty impressive. Uh, he has uh, this swivel right here, so he can swivel his entire leg around. He has double-jointed knees, and that is awesome. He has a calf swivel, and... Uh, at the end of his foot, he has this uh, toe articulation, and he does have this ankle joint where it moves up and down. So it's pretty good if you ever try to have him in a flight type of position. If uh, you're trying to make him look like he's walking with his tentacles, you just tilt him up. Anyway, now here's a look at the comic book that's in the box. I was pretty surprised at the artwork. Uh, I really didn't know what to expect when I first opened it, but once I started reading it, it turns out it's it's a, just a different variation of how Dr. Octopus came to be. Here's the trading card, and it looks... Uh, I really don't know what to make of it. I, I mean, I'm really not interested, so if anybody wants it, uh, just message me, and it's yours. My likes on this figure. Let's go. I gotta start off by saying the sculpting and detail on this figure, especially for the time frame when this figure did come out, it's pretty damn good, man. Another like is the paint job. I gotta say I love it, guys. The top thing for me as a collector, I want whatever I'm collecting to be a good representation, at least for me. And for me, this does it. It's a good representation of Dr. Octopus to me because a lot of the figures that I've seen before and after, and eh, Eh, they just kind of fall short. Now let's get into my dislikes. Now is this figure perfect? Is it a perfect figure? Eh, I wouldn't say perfect. Nothing's really perfect. But the portrayal of this guy is pretty dead on, so I really can't complain. The only thing I could really complain about is the base. When you look at the base, I'm just not really sold on it. I mean, is I mean, my only thing I could come up with, maybe he was fighting Spider-Man. This is from Spider-Man's Web. And if you really look closely in on it, it's not even the same base they have in the picture on the box. I, I'm just not a big fan of the base. My final verdict on the figure, I really gotta say I love the figure. I love it. It's actually gonna be a piece of my collection, and I'll be proud to display it. Now, would I recommend this figure? Eh, that all de really depends. Are you a Spider-Man fan, or are you a Villains fan? Either or, it really doesn't matter, because I think this figure, personally is a great figure to have and I would strongly recommend anybody to seek this guy and in my honest opinion I actually think this is probably the Dr. Octopus to have. I've seen Marvel Selects and I've seen uh, just other variations of this guy and they eh, they really don't do it for me man. This guy he is the bizarre and I recommend him. Now guys I want to thank you for watching another edition of Variant Reviews.